this is amazing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? So cool. When I heard there was lanterns, I, this is not what I had in mind at all. Yeah, I know. And this has got the candles in it, so for the show, we're going to light this up and it's going to be a flickering light. Yeah, that's it. And stretch, pull tight. See what we're doing? It was Julie Wallace's art group that came up with an ingenious way of bringing more art classes to Pinaru. How did this all come about? Yeah, well, a few years ago, we actually decided to start doing a bit of mosaics with a group of young mums from the school. And um, it was really fun and everybody really got into it and we thought, this is something we need more of. All right, so if you can't tie knots, tie lots. Is that what Dad says? Yeah. There we go. Are you going to put some orange on this one? Julie and her friends contacted a university and offered up their whole town for a groundbreaking study which started in 2020. A three-year investigation into whether more art and culture can boost the physical and mental health of an entire community. The idea about Pinnery Project came about, you know, to improve people's health and wellbeing and the connectivity in the community and keeping people happy. The Pinaroo Project has seen the town flooded with creative projects. The study is hoping to answer the question, can a community's overall health be improved by a good dose of art? The researchers from Flinders University come to Pinaroo and carry out blood pressure checks on locals and get them to fill out questionnaires. What about this one? What about this one? Men are usually less likely to access health services and arts programs. Oh, look at your hands. <laughs> I need you to move it upwards. But in Pinaru, the blokes are here in spades. That's amazing. What do you want to show the girls? Um, I want to show them that it's okay to go and do something different. Yeah. Something they perhaps haven't done. Oh, can I just fix this bit? Alright. I'm used to paper macheing with newspaper, so this is new. I suppose that wouldn't look very good on a lantern, yeah, really, would it? Not. <laughs> maybe not Saturday's advertiser. <laughs> Artistic expression comes a bit more naturally to Julie, who organised the lantern workshop. On Julie's family farm, she also runs a hairdressing salon and a studio for making jewellery. We cleared out the salon stuff, put that in the shearing shed for a while, um, and I moved my kilns in and it was a great space to work. Julie campaigned hard for the Pinaroo project. For her, it was personal. Arts has been a huge part of recovering from a um, a tumour in my head um, and I work and but I also find time to come out here every week and um, work on activities and just zone out and you know just um, play a different tune to myself <laughs> while I'm you know just being creative. I can sort of relate not that I'm nearly as creative as you <laughs> but like the fact you know, I've had a brain tumour taken out this year and it was, it was scary. Um, and, but coming through it and coming out the other side, it's, it's helped me focus on the things that bring me joy. You let go of the way you're down kind of things. Yeah. And it does give you time to think about the important things in life. Well-being means different things to different people. But I'm sensing in Pinaru it has a lot to do with feeling part of something. Having a sense of belonging. Alrighty, let's pick up the pace a bit, guys. You gonna be nice to me, Beck? Oh, of course. Is she? No, she never is. Ah. <laughs>
All right, here we go. Now up out the seat, find that resistance for base. Go, 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 you got it. That's it, keep those knees in. Beck Nijelke is a nurse. Gentle grip, that's it. And the town torturer. Doing good, keep going. I'm tired already. Push, guys. That's it, you got it. When Pinaroo's only gym closed due to a funding cut. Push, push, push. 15 seconds, you got it. That's it. Locals did what they always Three, do. Two, recover, well done. That was easy. They banded together and they built their own. The gym's been a huge success. So do you get a lot of men to these classes? We do. It's um, amazing. The support's been unreal. So uh, the, the spin class actually has more blokes and women in it. And then um, after spin, I run a stretch and strength session, which is just for blokes because they didn't want to do Pilates. So we've called it stretch and strength instead. So it's Pilates? Oh, not if you ask them. <laughs> So we're going to take the weight of our head in our hands, breathe out and lift the torso up and lower. Lift and rotate. Farmer Giles Oster, who I met at the Lantern Workshop, doesn't just come for the physical fitness. The spending time with these blokes, yeah. it's um, recharging on the batteries and it's knowing that you'll wake up tomorrow morning feeling really good and that bang, let's go and face the day and whatever it throws at us. And then up, back to the other side. I'm trying to keep your shoulder blades on the floor. Have you struggled with your, with your, your mental health at times? You wouldn't be human, I don't think, if you didn't stick your hand up and say there's been times where you've, uh, you've struggled. And um, yeah, oh, there's been times I've had some dark days, I've had some challenging times. And release. But I'm fortunate and, and blessed that there's people around me and there's lots of things happening in town now to um, to talk about it. Yeah, so the community gym, um, Beck is also on the committee of the Pinaroo Project and says with limited services in their small town, they've got to think creatively to prevent health problems. I definitely think it, it needs to be um, a holistic approach when it comes to our health and wellbeing and it's not just all about sweating it out on bikes or in the gym but also making connections through interests and, and having strength in our community.